Okay, you just graduated college, you got your certificate, you just finished a UX bootcamp, now what do you do? So I was in a very similar boat. My name is Stephanie, I'm a new UX designer, and I'm gonna give you guys some tips on what I would do if I had just graduated my bootcamp. So let's get into it. This is gonna be a chattier video. So I got my coffee, let's get into the tips. Tip number one is to leverage your network. And so by that, I mean, everybody knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody else. And you wanna make sure that you are connected to all these people that you've made connections with. So the people in your bootcamp, your peers, your teachers, your mentors, make sure you're following and connected to these people on LinkedIn, because LinkedIn is everything. And you wanna make sure that you're also connected to these people, but also just following like other UX designers, like senior designers, junior designers, because you never know who is in whose network. So you could see a post from somebody that you went to school with that they're connected to, and that person is connected to some other person. You know what I mean? Like it, there's a lot of degrees of separation. And so you wanna make sure that you are casting a wide enough net so that you will see everything. You want to put your little UX self in as many places as possible for visibility. Join some online groups. So whether it's like an alumni group from the program that you just did, whether it's like UX designers of the city that you're in, you just want to be in those groups. A, you know, camaraderie, love that. But also people are going to be posting about like, I'm interviewing for this job, or does anybody have any tips? Or it could be like, other people that already have jobs and they're just also in the group and saying like, hey, so-and-so's company is hiring, my company's hiring. So you want to, again, visibility, put yourself into every possible UX niche you can find. And then yeah. the next step from that is you're going to have to reach out to people and you cannot be shy. You know, I'd always joke that when it came to job hunting, I had no shame, none, no shame. I will reach out to anybody and everybody. Okay. I did. And I did. I did. I don't care. I did it. Um, and I'm a shyer person. Like I'm a quieter, more introverted person, definitely more than extroverted, but you got to put that ish to the side. Okay. Cause you want to put your best foot forward. And that means getting out of your comfort zone a little bit and just messaging people, putting out your professional foot and saying like, Hey, I'm this person. I'm ready to apply for this job. I know I can do the job. Like, so you have to set that like shyness aside and those perceptions of what people think of you put those to the side. You have to be applying like your life depends on it because your professional life kind of does. Um, I also want to show you guys an example of what I would do if somebody was posting that they had a job opening and how I would respond. So let's pop over to my screen. Okay guys, so I just did a screen grab of my LinkedIn and I just looked for like UX jobs hiring UX. And I came across this post here. I blurred it out for privacy. You're not going to sue me here. I'm not going to get sued. Um, okay, just to like look at this posting. Um, so this person said they're looking for entry level UX UI designer. The min requirement is having a personal project where you touch UE4 or UE5 for a 3D based game. Guys, I'm not a gamer, so I have no idea what that means. But some of you guys are awesome. Love that. Um, so maybe you know what this means. So anyway, so if you've done a personal project or built some small indie experiment, please reach out. Okay. And so people have like liked it, commented, blah, blah, blah. So a lot of the comments I see are something like, I'm interested, just followed you, just sent you a connect. Guys, they're not going to respond to that. Maybe, okay, maybe they will, but they're not going to go out of their way to respond to that because if I'm the hiring person and I just see somebody's interested, it's really going to stand out to me as somebody that's going to reach out and like go the extra mile. So by extra mile, what I would do, I would connect with this person, follow this person, and then I would send them a connect, like a LinkedIn connect message. And I will show you a message that I have sent before when I was job hunting. So hold on. Okay, so I just pulled up a screenshot. This is something that I sent um, to another person that was posting about a job when I was applying. This person put in like the job application link, so that's what I'm referring to. So I tell this person that I applied for the name of the position and wanted to introduce myself and explain how excited I am about the position. And then I get into a little bit about me. And so I was coming from interior design, like I said, 
And I didn't have any UX design experience, but I did have seven years of some kind of design experience. And so I say that here, seven years of design experience, most of that was in interiors, architecture, and visual design. So I am being honest. And then I say that those years of experience gave me a unique understanding of design requirements and know that I could bring a different perspective to this role. So a tip for like anybody that's switching careers you have something that's going to help inform you as a UX designer. UX designers, it's all about empathy. It's all about different perspectives. If you're coming from a different industry, you bring a different perspective. So make sure you leverage that. I've attached a copy of my resume and a link to my portfolio below. I look forward to learning more. Okay, for the too long didn't read people, you want to introduce yourself. Give a little bit of background about yourself. Why you'd be good for this role portfolio, resume, done. If I was receiving this, this would go a lot farther than somebody in the comments that just said, I'm interested. Okay, if you're interested, how about you send me a message, send me your resume, apply for the job. That's how I know you're really interested. Okay. Tip number two is pick a strategy. And I mean like a job hunting strategy. So in my mind, there's two ways to kind of go about it. Option A is that you apply for every single design job you see. You apply for literally everything. Um, you cast a wide net. If it's UX design, if it's design related, you are applying. It's kind of a game of odds. Like eventually, if you apply to like this many jobs, you're going to get probably this many responses. And those responses, you might get this many interviews and this, you know what I mean? Like, and you're kind of playing the odds and probability in the hopes that you will get a call back, that you will get an interview. Strategy B is to craft your cover letter, your resume, your portfolio, and you tailor it to the specific job that you're applying. Okay. So you can't do that with 150 jobs. Like that's kind of crazy. You can do that with like 10 jobs. So maybe you go on to LinkedIn, you go on Indeed, and you find the 10 best jobs that you think you'd be best at. And so then you're going to go and tailor your cover letter, you're going to tweak your portfolio, you're going to tweak your resume to be more appealing to that specific job. And then you send it out that way. There is a good chance that since your information is so tailored to that one position, you might stand out amongst the crowd. But it is time consuming. You know, and it's a lot of brain power to craft it nine different ways, to craft your resume nine different ways. So you really kind of have to focus on like which strategy is going to be the best for you. I kind of did a bastardization of both. Like I initially started with the cast the wide net, I'm applying for everything. And that did get me quite a few interviews. But in the end, I kind of started crafting my resume for jobs that I was actually interested in. And then that eventually got me my job. So both options are very valid. It just really depends on what's going to work the best for you. What kind of person are you? What kind of job hunter are you? You kind of want to know that before you pick a strategy, but make sure you pick one though. Don't half-ass it like I did. Don't be all over the place. Just pick one and stick with it. The next tip is to make sure that you are still practicing. Make sure you're still designing. And so you can do that in a couple of different ways. The easy one is to keep iterating on portfolio projects. Like there's a few projects in my portfolio where just like that part of the bootcamp was done. And so I moved on to the next project, but I could have kept like iterating some different solutions. So Use this time to like make those other solutions happen. Redesign an app that you love or an app that you hate. Like, is there an app that you just think is crap, but you like it and you feel like you could do some tweaks to it to make it feel better, make it flow better, make it look better? Like, do that. That could be a project that goes into your but portfolio. If you know anybody that has a small business or anybody that wants to start a website or anybody that's got any kind of project or side hustle, Offer to build the UI of a website. You know, maybe they've got a developer that they're working with or like a web designer, but maybe you can build the UI for them. Something else that can go in your portfolio project. It's about finding a little opportunities in your life that you can practice your design muscle. Next tip is to evaluate your options. So where do you want to work? What type of place do you want to work? I have it broken down into three different categories. They are startup slash small, medium-sized company, big tech, we all kind of know what that means. 
And then the third one is agencies. Um, but I will go over kind of the pros of each type. And so when it comes to small, medium sized startup type companies, what's great about that is that you're probably gonna get to work on a lot of things outside of just the designer role. Like if it's a small enough, small enough company, maybe they're gonna hire you on as the UX designer, but you're also gonna be helping them with logos or graphics or anything maybe the marketing team might need. You're gonna get a lot of experience pretty quickly because you could be the only in the first designer. You could be on a small team of designers. So you're gonna be taking a lot on, but you're gonna learn a ton. So that's really cool. Next type is big tech and big tech, and I'll explain a little bit more in a second, but Big tech is having a tough, tough time right now as we all see the headlines. Um, big tech is kind of a scary place to be, but it's not gonna be like that forever. Big tech is your vibe, is your niche. They have really great offerings. Like they're gonna have probably huge budgets. So you'll get to maybe dive deeper into whatever discipline it is. Maybe you're gonna be all focused on one specific type of UX design. Maybe you're gonna be specifically on the mobile team of let's say something like a Spotify. You're gonna be so specialized and so focused on that that you're gonna get really good at this one specific thing, which is awesome. Honestly, be a subject matter expert on something. Like maybe you are just so good at mobile that you are the mobile person to go to. And that is something that is gonna be a great tool in your tool belt. And the last one is agencies. And so this one is something I'm a little bit more familiar with because it's kind of similar to how interior design works, but it's gonna be client-based. So you're gonna have all kinds of clients come to you and you're gonna be the designer for this client, for that client, which is awesome because you get to see all kinds of industries. When I was interior design, I did everything from mountain homes to residential to healthcare, office buildings. Like you kind of get to touch a ton of different industries and then it kind of be cool to focus on maybe I like fintech more or maybe I like mobile gaming more. Like you get to see all your options before you have to pick anything. So that show you guys this post here, just because I really think this is a good way to be looking at things. Um, I think it's probably okay that I show off Austin here. Um, Cause he's, I see his post a lot of the time. So here he's talking about big tech and how a lot of people feel that, you know, these places are like, the dream company. They're the place to work. It's the only place I want to be. And I really like his thinking in that it could be these places, but what's most important is that these things here, that it allows your values, pays you what you're worth, allows you to enjoy your work, challenges you to grow, and then rewards um, that grow with pay and promotions. Like those are the types of places you want to be thinking about, not just um, how flashy the name is, you know? It can be anywhere, but as long as like you've got these things here, those are the places that you want to be focusing on. So whether that's startup, big tech, agency, like make sure you've got your values aligned. Make sure your values align. The next step is more of a reminder and a mantra that you are not an imposter. You are not. You completed the camp. You got your education you meet all the qualifications like it's so easy to think that i somehow stumbled my way into this and they're gonna figure me out but no you went through the schooling you got the requirements you can do the job every place is going to be a little bit different of like what the requirements are but don't feel like you don't belong here well, everybody starts off as an awkward beginner like everybody on the beginner um, it's important that when you are applying that you're not misrepresenting yourself in any kind of way. Like that post I showed you, like I said that I did have design experience, but it wasn't UX. It was something, but not UX. So come in as you are, and that's going to be received. It's okay to be new. Everybody is new. Most people are faking it till they make it. Meaning, you know, like I'm confident, but I'm also understanding that I'm new and that I'm going to make mistakes, but I did the work to be here. So... I'm not going to doubt myself. Nobody is really doubting you in your profession. So why would you doubt yourself? Okay, guys, that is what I have for you. I hope these tips help take a few into consideration. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Drop me any questions below. You guys have been leaving 
the best questions. You guys are so cool and so smart and I'm so excited for all of you guys. So please keep them coming, keep them coming. Um, yeah, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.